Now that's what I'm fucking talking about. Now that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about, people. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Once again, be sure to smash that like and subscribe button. We had the final episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi, and oh my god, this episode delivered on everything I was hoping that this episode would actually deliver on, and it even exceeded what I actually wanted, and it act like, everything, like, all the complaints people had about Obi-Wan is too weak, and I'm like, guys, you just need to calm down, you just need to calm down, people! It's all leading up to something, guys, it's all leading up to something. Now, this episode, to me, just, just pretty much had everything in it, if you're a fan of Star Wars, Obi-Wan Kenobi as a character, it had everything. The confrontation between Obi-Wan and Vader, the final confrontation, well, final, I mean, they meet again in A New Hope, but the final confrontation in the series, anyway, was absolutely phenomenal. Anyone who actually had a complaint that Obi-Wan was underpowered and weak can't complain about that now. Like, Obi-Wan went straight beast mode. Like, he was going god-tier level on Vader's ass. Like, so much so that I actually looked around and go, Vader's a little bitch. And it was really touching at the end. Like, this fight really got to me. Like... Obi-Wan Kenobi, Hugh McGregor's performance in this fight actually got to me. Like, like, it was so sad. You could feel the pain. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Anakin. For all of it. Doesn't that hit you in the feels? Just everything about that final confrontation with Vader was everything I wanted because when I envisioned Obi-Wan going up against Vader again, I thought about Ahsoka going up against Vader in Rebel Season 2. It was like, oh my god, wouldn't that be awesome if Obi-Wan kind of has the same experience? And then you see the mask broken and you see Hayden Christensen, Anakin looking through there and it's just like, holy shit. Like, that was everything I wanted. It was emotional. It was impact. And it just shows you how far Anakin Skywalker has went down and how Vader emerges. And that is who Anakin is now. Anakin Skywalker is dead. Only lives Darth Vader. And you can see that. Like, it was awesome and horrifying at the same exact time. Then we get a cameo from Emperor Palpatine himself. And you see Vader. He's, like, all pissed off. Like, we're going to find his sweet and sour chicken ass guys i got the stormtroopers the death troopers we got clone troopers coming out of retirement we're gonna find his sweet and sour chicken ass and palpatine center like i think you're kind of going overboard you're letting your emotions get a, the best of you like if this is a problem you need to let me know because you need to be able to bury your past and then quickly vader is like shit never mind you're my master all right fuck fuck obi-wan I'll, I'll see him in about nine years on the death star right before you guys blow the shit up so definitely see an emperor palpatine show up that was definitely a highlight that I wasn't expecting. I didn't think they needed to do that, but it was awesome because it showed that Vader just had a one-tracked mind where he was just looking for Obi-Wan, looking for Obi-Wan. And Emperor Palpatine's like, look, man, this is a part of this, this is attachment. You know, you need to kill this shit. And it was good that they actually hit on that, and I like that a lot. Another thing that I really, really liked was the whole Owen Lars defending. Luke Skywalker against Reva. Now, in full disclosure, Reva is the absolutely worst part of this episode, just as she's the worst part of this entire series. But what are you going to do? You just kind of got to go with the punches on this one. I didn't like what they did with Reva. I didn't like they redeemed her character. Whatever. Let's push her out of the way. Owen Lars kicks ass, though, because Owen Lars was defending Luke against Reva, and it, it was awesome. And then we get to see Obi-Wan go back to Alderaan, and he confronts Princess Leia, and they have, like, this heart to heart and he tells her a little bit about her parents and you really get the feels like there's a lot of emotion going on in this episode because I always liked the chemistry between these two within the series I liked how he went off world to try to find Leia and the bond that they kind of shared and he had that little moment with Owen and Owen kind of had like this mutual respect for him 
because he knows that Obi-Wan is just trying to protect Luke Skywalker. I enjoyed that mutual respect conversation that they had right before he allowed Obi-Wan to finally meet Luke for the very first time. And then, of course, at the end here, we finally get the Qui-Gon Jinn cameo that we all been waiting for that we all expected was going to happen because you know they've been hinting at it for the whole goddamn show so i was happy they finally showed qui-gon jen and i liked how they explained it like you weren't able to see me because you weren't ready now you're ready and now we got a much much further road to go and you see qui-gon just disappear as obi-wan's walking right in between the two the two cliffs there in the canyon like it was so poetic this series finale was so well done to me, this was a great series finale. It gave us everything that we wanted. A lot of the criticism that we heard about Obi-Wan being weak and underpowered and all this, like all that was done for storytelling aspects. And now that you see the overarching series, you can see where it was the development of this character. The Obi-Wan from episode three, when he's getting burnt alive by Darth Vader, is not the same Obi-Wan that we get in the final episode. Because that Obi-Wan gave up on humanity, gave up on life. Like, he failed. He The failure of losing Anakin has really dwelled on this guy for years. And he just gave up on any good that could happen in the world. The Obi-Wan that we see at the end of this series is the Obi-Wan who wants once again embraces the force embraces good knows that there are good people out there obi-wan had to go on this life lesson and that was what this series was about that life goes on and there's still good in the world and there's still good worth fighting for and i absolutely and en fucking enjoyed it guys it, it was amazing guys but anyway guys that's all i have that is my review of the season finale of obi-wan as well as pretty much the entire series in general i want to know what you guys think be sure to smash that like and subscribe button until next time as always i am robert storms and that's my opinion